Hello, the Garden State Film Festival promotes student creativity, makes the arts accessible to underserved populations, and preserves heritage arts. Welcome to the Garden State Film Festival podcast, where we bring to you industry professionals, filmmakers, and game changers in our industry. We're connecting you with phenomenal and diverse groups of people who we respect and admire. For 20 years, the Garden State Film Festival has been showcasing Jersey talent and bringing outstanding talent to Jersey from the world. I'm Lauren konkar the Executive Director of the Garden State Film Festival, and with me today is David Schoner, Jr., Associate Director of the New Jersey Motion Picture and Television Commission. And to my right, we have owner of B&B Props, Emiliano Perez. Hello. 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 Welcome. Hi, welcome aboard. Yes. Thank you for having me today. Good. I just want to give our audience a little background about you because I think it's what you what you do in your industry. I don't think a lot of people are they're aware of it, but I don't know how unique it is. And right. we always have been trying to focus as we talk about young people and the options of what they can go into that you, this is another part of the industry that you're working very successfully as a business person, but it's not something you may really recognize. Yeah, what I've found myself doing over the years has been pivoting from year to year, and there are so many different things that you can do in life, and being able to diversify with every aspect of your life, I have found to be the most important. Uh, I actually went to college for technical theater, and yet I've pivoted in so many different directions since then, and yet every path along the way has provided me with knowledge that helps me in my next path. So I think it's super important for uh, people of all ages to be able to diversify and look at things along the way and utilize it in all sorts of different ways. We have uh, a small television studio at my location, we have rentals at my location, and we have office space at my location, and we also do a lot of fabrication. So each one of these aspects of my life have been created because I've had to pivot in a different direction. And you know, coming up nowadays with all the stuff happening to all of us, um, I, I just want people to be aware of all the different paths that you can take in life. So one of the things I just want to make sure everyone understands what's going on. So Emiliano uh, owns B&B Props, which began as a small prop construction service and has grown to a leading design and fabrication shop servicing film, TV, and theatrical industries. B&B Props also services commercials, educational, residential sectors. They have the equipment and the experience, everything when you're going to be putting something together. And I'm oversimplifying it. And I, I think, you know, does it's it feel, a lot. It's a yeah. lot. So, so tell us about what you actually really do. <laughs> well, it, 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 it's funny because there are so many different things that we do do. So when I get up in the morning and I come to work, I'm never quite sure what I'm going to face when I walk in. You know, it could be uh, a flood in the building. Thank you, Hurricane Ida. Or it could be just we need to fabricate a train for the end of the week. We actually got a phone call yesterday, and a lot of what I talk about, I can't really say what it is because we have to sign NDAs on these things. Mm -hmm. But we got asked to do a headlight that mimics something in a movie that's going to be on a Zamboni on the West Coast in a hockey game. So... Sometimes we have to design it from the ground up. Sometimes we get provided with an AutoCAD drawing, but what we have to do every day is be able to pivot and be accessible to all sorts of different people. So sometimes it's just a creative mind that has an idea, and sometimes it's a fully fledged out idea. Um, the key is to be flexible, and the key is to right. be open. Well, I w we were talking about this, and it's been consistent. It's about pivoting, it's about multitasking, and it's about you have to adapt to all those little things. Correct. Um, within my facility, I supply executive offices for different movies and television shows. And yet, once somebody is in that specific location renting, they'll walk over and look at the 3D printers and say, oh, you know what? We're working on a, a, a train set on this next film, and we're going to need to provide a train that looks a certain way. Will you be able to do that? And I was like, sure, you know, we can 3D scan you and the train can look like you if you want to. Or it can be, you know, something that looks Art Deco from the 1930s. The, the possibilities are limitless nowadays. And that's where leading into being flexible, if you are a graphic designer, if you're an AutoCAD person, if you are just somebody with a creative mind, or if you're a sculptor, you may say to yourself, how can I move into the entertainment business? Mm -hmm. Or you may say to yourself, what business can I really move into? Because yeah. everything needs to be flexible. And the opportunities that are presented here in New Jersey, 
especially in the entertainment business, are huge. And you never know until you go out there and explore the possibilities. And that's what we like to provide where I am. Well, I think when you talk about possibilities, and it's something we talked about with the Garden State Film Festival, it's possibilities and opportunities. Yes. So it isn't, you don't have to be pigeoned into being a director, a writer, you know, producer, that type of things. But you're a graphic designer. Maybe you're a sculptor. Yes. It could be any of those other things that young people are in the arts or in school, Brookdale. Yep. You can, there's opportunities to go into this business yes. and work in it where you're creatively doing something that you're going to see on that screen. You hit on something so interesting, yeah. David. And, and first of all, thank you for all the work you guys do because bringing me into this and being able to speak about these sort of things is, is so encouraging for the future when when I go into work I look around and I have one person who used to be an auto mechanic I have another person who used to be a plumber I have another That's person amazing. who used to be a professor in a college <laughs> the person who used to be a professor in a college is now running a seven axis robot that can carve Seven axes means you can carve from the wrist, you can carve from the elbow, you can carve from the shoulder, you can pivot around, and the possibilities are endless. With that particular mm -hmm. robot, just to speak about technology yeah, for yeah. a second, wow. there's only probably about 65 of these particular machines that can do what this one does in the country. And a lot of them are in Hollywood and a lot of them are in Georgia, but up on the East Coast, there's not a lot of them out there. And there's not a lot of people that can run them. So as we all adapt to technologies and you start to learn these sort of things, the possibilities become endless. And because I draw these people from all sorts of different vocations, mm -hmm. they bring so much more to the table. You know, it's, it's a high school education, it's a college education, it's a master's degree, or it's just you're working your way up through whatever your path is in life. And it's so important. It, I don't know mm -hmm. these things, but I trust in the people that right. do know these things. I'll walk into some meetings and I'll know the possibilities of what we can do. Do I know how to implement every step of the way? No, but I know how to get it done with people who are passionate about what they do. And to have trust in people that you work with, it's, it's so important. Yep. That's it's, again, the word that's, of the day. that has been the word of the day. And I love it's all about opportunities that you could be in a vocation where maybe you went to a two-year community college or you're just, you are a mechanic, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. There is opportunities to work in if you want to do something a little different, a little more exciting, and those doors are open. Exactly, and here's a perfect example. Again, I can't speak of what these things are. It's, a, it's an mm -hmm. Apple television show that's coming out next year, but they came to us with a very ambitious production schedule. Mm -hmm. We need this stuff done, it needs to be done in four weeks, and it needs to be perfect. And what's my answer? Of course, sure. we can do that. Yeah. yeah, sure. And then I sit down and I say, my goodness gracious, how are we going to figure this out? Mm -hmm. So they came to us with a series of cars that all need to be adapted to look like futuristic vehicles. Because uh. one of the other things I'm very passionate about is just the green environment that we all have to exist in. Mm -hmm. We all have to live in this world and we have to survive to do it. Mm -hmm. So they came to us with these cars that we had to make into electric vehicles. And we had four or five weeks to do it. So... How do you do it? This is where the breadth of knowledge from all the different, we yeah. needed the sculptor, we needed the car mechanic, we needed the seven axis robot carver, we needed the vacuum form machine. So they delivered us some Land Rovers and some Jeeps and some FJs and we just went to town and it, it came out really beautiful because people came from all different places and right. brought their knowledge to a place where it can all coalesce into a cohesive stew at the end. And we all love stew, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think also when you talk about being green and stuff like that, and it's something that the Garden State Film Festival does, it, when you, you know, it is a bigger world, mm -hmm. right? It's this yeah. much bigger world. And one of the things that you talk about is that you, you're very conscious of it as you do stuff. And Garden State is also very conscious of it because we have people that maybe you're hard of hearing. Yeah. Or, or mean, visually the, impaired. Visually yeah. impaired. And what yeah. do you do? Yeah. I mean, tell, we adapt. Tell. Yeah. So we always have, um, for our hearing impaired patrons, we always have film blocks with subtitles only. And yeah. this year, I have a surprise. <sighs> I can't talk about it yet, but there's a surprise for our visually impaired friends, too. Oh, I'm so excited. So if you just stalk me on, no, I'm just kidding, on gsff.org and reach out, we will be able to provide you with more information. But I am over the moon thrilled because we've been working so hard for a few years. Obviously, we can't have everyone do subtitling ourselves or closed captioning for every single film. Last year, we had 300 movies. Mm -hmm. We can't do that, and it's so expensive, you know, 
the cost per minute to subtitle and closed captions. So we're thrilled, filmmakers, if you're listening, even the English speaking films, we want to have captions, okay? Please do that for me. Um, so that we always have a good mixture in that um, hearing impaired well, film you, box. You've touched on something close to my heart. Well, I was heart. gonna say, because, uh, sorry, I'm gonna cut you off one year. It's just saying, yeah. it is about this bigger picture that yeah. you were leading into, yeah. sorry. Uh, my daughter is bilaterally cochlear implanted, so she was oh, born yeah. deaf. Oh, yeah. So my world is all in subtitles. I mean, <gasps> she hears exactly like you and I do, mm -hmm. but she has a, a device that hooks up to Bluetooth mm -hmm. that enables her to hear, just like you and I. And it's an amazing technology. Amazing. Uh, yeah, our subtitles are a part of our part of our home. So. You know, as I get older, I need subtitles anyway. Yeah, I know, me too. I'm like, don't turn them off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And with, with the breadth of uh, different films and different uh, television shows coming from other places, I mean, uh, Squid Games and yes. uh, the Parasite. I mean, you see those movies. I mean, it was so important. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, people that maybe have a disability where they say, you know what, I can never really do this. They have the opportunity to do whatever they need to do because right. we're providing the infrastructure to help them along and so yes. important. Yes, but I learned going out, we have all year round outreach for education, military, and senior. So the young chick at the senior outreach realized they love the subtitled foreign films because they're in denial about getting hearing aids and they can actually enjoy the movie. So it was really important for us to make blocks just for subtitling for that. If they're in denial or not, right. they can still come and enjoy, you know, and sit back. Because we, I was somewhere else, and the wife was telling the husband everything the whole time for something else. I'm yeah. like, no, no, no. We need to have it so that we're ADA compliant. We only present in ADA compliant venues as well. Oh, fantastic. But the fact that you have that, it's so hard to get funding and it's very difficult to get closed captioning mm -hmm. and subtitles. So I'm glad that you're able to have access to that. Yeah. I, I just like the fact that, that you know, it, there is a bigger picture in, yeah. in what you're doing. It's a business, it's, you know, it's still, but you have this bigger picture um, in the thing. You're being gr as green as you can, you can be. Yeah, and I've reached out uh, on all levels. I've reached out to the mayor of our town in Little Falls uh, to have a little outreach with the local schools and I, I work <laughs> with different colleges and different high schools and I've had the kids walk through and I'm so surprised that they don't have more questions because in an environment like this if, if I were a young person mm -hmm. I would say man I have so many questions if I if I had the opportunity to do something like this to walk through a facility such as mine I, I would be all over it but I had the passion at a younger age sometimes you know people find it at this age and sometimes at this at this age as much mm -hmm. as we can can help that along and again there is so many different opportunities and you know it, it doesn't have to be as you were saying it doesn't have to be the director it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. the designer Right. It can be the truck driver. It can yes. be the catering person. It can be the medic. It can be COVID complaint. Well, let's not well, have any more yeah, COVID complaints. Not. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there's just so many different aspects of our business that just needs to get out there. That's and wonderful. it will perpetuate all of us to continue to move forward. I love That's, it. Yeah, because you need all that energy to come together to create. Agreed. I can't believe all of the wonderful fabrications and everything that you guys create. It's, oh, it's, it's so much Lauren's fun. Looking at your this website. is yeah. why I hold on to things. I'm like, someone, a prop person can use this one day. <laughs> and now I know where to send everything, and I'm like, I just got to get rid of it. Well, you know, uh, the biggest thing for me is all my employees have to really, like, t tie me down to a chair sometimes because I'll get uh, a lot of estate sales, and they'll yeah. come to me. Oh, do you, can you come and clean? Oh, absolutely, I'll be there. And they'll, no, no, I please. Know. <laughs> we can't move as it is. Oh, but it, it's super important over the years to sort of distinguish what is going to be important mm -hmm. and what is visually stimulating for all of us. I mean, it's great just being in this building. Again, there's a there's a show that's coming out next year that we can't discuss, but we provided a bunch of stuff for this building. I, I, can, I can tell a, a funny little anecdote real quick. They did a bunch of shots from the outside looking in at this location we're at here in Bell Labs. And the, it was snowing outside, so they had some snow, and they had some snow in the periphery on the outside shot shooting in. And then when they went to do the, the outside shot a couple weeks later, you know, we're in New Jersey, all the snow had melted. So we had to provide 90 feet of snow mounds that had been pushed by a plow, mm -hmm. and we only had a week to do it. So, again, how did we do it? We had to call our foam supplier, which isn't the most green thing in the world, but we mm -hmm. were able to recycle it and uh, oh, great. mush yeah. it all with chainsaws and oh, cut it yeah. so it looked like a snowplow. And it all came here to Bell Labs. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was an exciting one. But, again, you have to learn how to just adapt and go with the punches. Yeah, and it, 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 it is about that. 
one of the things I want to ask you, because we, we were touching on it, so how did you get where you are? And it's not necessarily a trick question, but we, right. always, we like to really infuse, especially if young people or someone that's yeah. trying to start out in the business or is having a change of what their career may be. How do, what is that path? How did this path take you to where you are? The way it first started was my mom took me to see a Broadway show. Took, took me to see Les Mis, and I, I loved the show, I loved all the theatrics of it, and I said to myself, that's something I, I want to be involved in. So I worked in the bottom in a scenic studio that built television, mm -hmm. movies, and theater shows, and I sort of learned all the hands-on stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and I still have all my fingers, so I must have done okay. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on wood. Mm -hmm. um, but you work your way up through the fabrication end, and I said, okay, I sort of see how all this stuff is built. And, you know, not knowing where this will end up. So right. you never know where your path will end up. You work hard. You show up on time. And being on time is late in my world. <laughs> so you get yeah. there early and you do it as much as you can. And then I was able to tour the world with a couple of different shows. I was... 20 years old and I was on tour with a couple of different wow. shows so I oh, sort wow. of got a lot of cultures in me we went to Bangkok and we went to Japan and we went to Europe and you know by the time I was 22 oh. years old I had a full passport right. so wow. it sort of gave me an overview as to what the world is like and I said you know yeah. what there's there's a lot to do here and I came back into New York and I started working on Broadway shows and television shows as a prop person and I said to myself, man, there's a lot to do here in props because you need a little bit of carpentry. You need yeah. a little bit of electric. That's true. You need a little bit of plumbing if you want a sink to roll around and blow up water. Mm -hmm. So then I sort of said to myself, there's no place I can go where I can provide everything for myself. So I said, I'll rent a little place. So I started with a 1,500 square foot place that we just fabricated things and stored things because that's what I needed right. to supply to the industry. And that 1,500 turned into 15,000, turned into 50,000, turned into oh 90,000 square feet now. <laughs> and it's a place where oh people God. in our industry can go for all of the things you need. Can you go somewhere and get a bigger studio? Yes. Can you go somewhere and get a bigger thing made? Yes. But the specialty that we have is it's key. It's, it's like a boutique. Seriously, the detail. But by you going around the world, I feel like allows you to create all of these masterpieces. Exactly. Oh my God. It, you can have a designer come to yeah. you and reference the Louvre or reference, yeah. oh, that stadium in Yokohama. Oh yeah, okay, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Institutional knowledge. Yeah, that, yeah. That's it key. is. It is really a key and it's it's so important in, in what is what is going on with when you're working in this business because you they want to be able to reference something and be able to talk to you about it and be able to comprehend what you're talking about. Yeah. And that ties back exactly what you're speaking of. If you're a young person and you're coming up and you're going for healthcare or you're going for auto mechanics, yep. you have a place in the entertainment industry because you can bring something to the table. Your specialty can be adapted to within this industry on so many different levels. One thing I would like to suggest is all, all you kids out there, please, make, sure, please. make sure you, you take your business course or your, your, your financial literacy course. Mm. Good because advice. one thing I didn't do with all of that is, is take those courses. And now I'm like scratching my head. How do I do QuickBooks? How do I oh, do? yeah. Oh, <laughs> like uh, reconcile, click, click, boom. Yes. But th then again, if you're an accountant, if you went to school for banking, all of these things. It's needed and so important. It's needed. So many different levels. So before we wrap it up, I want to mm -hmm. ask you, so what is some? What is the like maybe the biggest thing or the u most unique thing? It doesn't have, you don't have to tell us the company, obviously, but what's something that's so unique? Because I think you're more than just a prop shop mm -hmm. per se. You, you know, we talked about all these different levels and Lauren's loving, oh my but, God. So, yeah. I'm like but what <laughs> is the unique thing you fabricated that you've maybe you've kind of? You know, one of the more unique things that we've done recently, and actually you can you can see it, uh, and it ties into your last guest a little bit was. Uh, Succession, we did a bunch of stuff for Succession last season. Anybody who's seen last season, I don't want to give anything away, but Kendall has a birthday party, and their art director came to us and said, you know, I have this reference that I found, and I think I'd like to utilize it, and it wants to look like a big pill. And we said, okay. So we, we sketched some stuff up. He sketched some stuff up. And it was a 35-foot-long pill that <laughs> Kendall oh was going to sit inside for his birthday party. So we had to come up with a way to build a large conical pill oh. out of aluminum. <gasps> 
and have the party happen inside of it. Now, it's funny because when you watch the show, it's probably about 10 or 15 seconds, but it took us six or seven weeks to fabricate this. And then when they went to the studio, they realized that it was a little too big for the studio. It wouldn't fit in the door. No. So we had to ad adapt it a little bit so that it did fit in the door. And these are the things that, you know, you just, again, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> but we utilized so many different aspects of what we do. There was there was welding. There was CNC routing. There was a lot of, it was like a decoupage, if you look at it it was covered in different sorts of fabric and uh it was a fun project because we didn't quite know what it would look like and then we don't really see it oh, until right, it's yeah. filmed and right. you see it in the end that's so, right so that's, that's a neat cool. one kendall's 40th birthday party on succession that was that was a fun one to build nice i think the takeaway with emiliano is adaptability yeah you know yeah. because it's really that's what this business is about it's yeah. about adaptability and no matter what level you're working on you could be a mechanic. Your adaptability is they could be working with you putting something together, fixing a car. Yeah, and as all three of us are sitting here, we're all gregarious individuals that get along with other people. And you want to be good at what you do. You want to be agreeable. You want to work hard. You can have the most skills in the world. And if it's difficult to work with you, mm. it's difficult mm -hmm. to work with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to be around with people that you have fun with. At the end yeah. of the day, David, let's go have dinner. Yes. Let's have a beer yeah. together. Yes. So those aspects of getting along with people, working together as a team, especially nowadays, is yes. so important. I mean, I'm seeing a reality TV show. They come in, they get the assignment, and then you see everyone work together yes. and how they're going to do it. Yes, how they're going to make how they're going to make it work. Yeah. Yes, so important. Yeah. Especially nowadays we're all separated and looking at Zoom meetings, so Oh yeah. You know, people people you are so You need to come important. together and have that energy to build and you're literally building so many fantastic things. Thank you so much. Yes, it's my pleasure. Outstanding. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I don't need to tell you this, but art changes lives. We've grown to be the hottest independent film festival in New Jersey, enriching our audiences by attracting the boldest and freshest voices in cinema worldwide. We are an imaginative platform for emerging filmmakers, writers, composers, and creators, regardless of who they are or where they're from. We proved that in 2020 and again in 2021. Join us 2022, March 23rd to 27th, in Cranford, New Jersey, in Asbury Park, and we'll see you in just a little bit. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.